Bo Pearson is going to go through the pros, the cons, the advantages, disadvantages, and I'm a piercer. So that means it's pros and cons by a piercer, episode number 64. So stick around. that are new to the channel. My name is Davo. I'm a professional body piercer and have been since 1994. I own and operate the Axiom Body Piercing Studio located here in Des Moines, Iowa, inside Skin Kitchen Tattoo. So when I talk to you about these things, I'm talking at a level of expertise as somebody who has been in the body piercing industry for well over 25 years. So what the heck is a faux Rook piercing. Faux rook is a piercing that is done just exactly the same way we would do an upper ear uh, cartilage piercing or flat piercing. It's done through that tissue directly above this top ridge where the rook goes through, usually towards the front and just past where that uh, helix, uh, front helix flap is, where we do forward helixes. It's done straight through to match that anatomy or the flatness to make it as straight as possible and at a 90 degree angle. Usually done with a barbell or labre stud. I personally like labre studs because they seem to take up less room, but sometimes a barbell works a little bit better, especially if the angle is kind of weird and we want to limit any additional contact on the back or have kind of a smooth instead of those sharp edges of the disc. So let's get into it. I'm going to give you five advantages, five disadvantages, five pros, five cons, starting with the pros. The first one being is this piercing is when compared to a rook piercing, which is the only other piercing that's generally in this area is less prone to problems. There's a lot of reasons for this, including the fact that a rook piercing is going to be more likely to get caught on things. The jewelry tends to stick out a little bit more. It has a lot more contact. So thus it is more prone to problems than, uh, than a, uh, a faux rook would be. Uh, it heals basically the same way a cartilage piercing would. And because it's located more inside the ear or more further down and away from the edge of the ear, has less contact than other ear piercings. And that brings us to number two, low profile. Because basically all that's going to be on the front of that would be a ball or gem. There's not anything protruding or sticking out that's going to cause issues, depending on if the jewelry size correctly. Unlike a rook, which is going to have either a ring or a curved barbell that's a little oversized um, and is more prone to getting caught on things or snagging on clothing, etc., this one tends to be a little less prone to that. Number three, there's a large variety of different ends that you can put on this. Everything from uh, fancy jeweled ends to the very basic of balls. Uh, in various different colors, designs, materials, etc., You can pretty much find uh, just about anything your heart may desire. And then some. And some stuff you probably don't desire. Number four, just like an upper ear cartilage piercing, this piercing has a long history of healing without issues. Um, it is located in an area where it may take a little bit longer than other piercings to heal, just basically because of the blood, blood supply of the type of tissue, but it is not a piercing that's really, really super prone to problems or issues. Number five, it looks great in the anatomy. It just kind of fits well when they're done right and just kind of, kind of accents that natural curvature of the ear and that flat area when done right. So that moves us on to the cons, the disadvantages, the things we don't like about this particular piercing. The first one is it definitely requires the right anatomy. If that flat is curved too much this way, causing too much strain on the piercing, there may not be room in the back for the jewelry to sit comfortably. Um, also, there might not be enough room to support the piercing. Uh, everybody's ear is shaped vastly differently from person to person. So in some cases, your anatomy just isn't going to work well for this particular piercing. Number two, that angle has to be dead on and match that uh, the shape of the flat area of the ear. 
With that, anatomy comes back into it because a lot of them are bulbous shaped or uh, arch outward. Some of them fold. Some of them do various different things. So it really does, that piercing needs to just be dead on so that the jewelry will fit comfortably and there won't be issues. Number three, when you pierce this initially because the... Uh, because there is a factor of swelling and cartilage piercings are prone sometimes to swelling a lot more than we perceive they're going to or guess they're going to, we generally tend to oversize the jewelry to make sure that impacting doesn't happen where uh, the jewelry is not long enough to allow for the amount of swelling that happens. So a longer piece of jewelry needs to be put in. Uh, this could have its advantages and disadvantages, mainly the main disadvantages, you're going to see a lot more movement than if we could pierce there with just a, jewel, a piece of jewelry that's just long enough for the piercing. Number four, you are limited to stud style jewelry. You cannot put rings in this. You cannot put, I guess you could possibly put curved barbells in it, but you're pretty much stuck with one style of jewelry. Uh, Lebrays or bar, straight barbells. Nothing else can be put in this piercing. Number five, during the healing process, this piercing and possibly even afterwards, this piercing is really acceptable to being slept on. You do definitely not want to sleep on this piercing. You want to isolate it as much as possible. Um, this is why if you're considering getting it done on one side or the other, I generally would suggest choosing the side that you don't answer the phone with and that you don't sleep on. So that covers all the pros and cons, advantages and disadvantages. Here's a brief consultation of what I would go through if you came into my studio and asked to get this piercing done. The first thing I'm going to tell you is that the average healing time can range anywhere from if you're really lucky and really healthy, eight weeks to anywhere up to about three to four months, during which time I'm going to suggest doing compresses with sterile saline solutions such as Nelmed Wound Wash twice daily um, with a folded up paper towel or a sterile piece of gauze sponge for roughly about 10 minutes. Additionally, I'm going to suggest when you feel like you've contaminated the area to clean it with an antimicrobial or germicidal soap. Only, as I said, only if you feel like you've contaminated the area. Speaking of contamination, cross-contamination prevention, common sense stuff. Wash your hands before you handle it, no oral contact, no exchange of bodily fluids, keeping your environment clean, clothing, bedding, towels, not submerging the piercing and bodies of water you can't control the quality of, which is everything but your own clean bathtub. In other words, no swimming until it is healed. Keep pets away from it. Don't let them sleep in the bed with you. They're just germ magnets. Also, you want to avoid contact with wet clothing or wet hair. Uh, you want to make sure to shield it from uh, if you use any type of hair products or et cetera that come out of a spray can. You also want to do that if you see the beautician or barber. Um, you want to keep uh, avoid contact with telephones, earbuds, headphones, anything, helmets, hats, et cetera. Anything that may come in contact with the area needs to be cleaned on a regular basis. You do not want to sleep on the piercing. Make sure you're sleeping on your other side or your back until it is completely healed. That covers it. Uh, pretty much everything you need to know about a faux rook piercing uh, as far as pros and cons and kind of what it's a basic version of what it's going to take to heal that out. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. We like it when you like it. If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. We post roughly about... Uh, four to five videos a week uh, with focus on education on body piercing and tattooing. Um, hit the notification bell so you're notified every single time we post something. If you like swag and you're a stylish individual who likes to show their pride of their body art, even in their clothing, check out our merch store. We have uh, a number of different t-shirts, designs, shirts, all over prints, all kinds of fun stuff on there. Um, and then other stuff like tote bags and uh, uh, iPhone cases and Samsung cases. And uh, did I mention tote bags? And decals, stickers. Everybody loves stickers. You can put them anywhere. Till next time, here's hoping all your piercings heal with ease and without a single issue. And if you're in the Des Moines, Iowa area, I hope to see you for your body piercing needs in the future. Once we get past the uh, COVID-19 thing and we're given the all clear to come out of hiding. Speaking of which, stay safe, stay distant, and wash your goddamn hands.